Well, this evening we are thrilled to welcome back actor, writer, producer, and director Emilio Estevez. He and his father Martin Sheen star in The Way, a film that follows Martin Sheen's character who walks the Camino de Santiago de Compostela following the death of his son, played by Emilio. This is Emilio's fourth film as a writer-director and marks the third collaboration with his father. Originally released in 2011, The Way, with new additional content, is coming back to theaters for one night only, two weeks from this evening, Tuesday, May 16th. Welcome back to the Busted Halo Show, Emilio Estevez. Thank you so much, Father Dave. It's amazing to be back with you. Uh, after all these years, it was uh, we, a are, we are reunited <laughs> on the same I remember, movie. So it was about a week ago that you came over to Cardinal Dolan Studios, and I remember at some point you just sort of burst into the studio and you said, you, you, Father Dave, busted Halo. You were the first press we ever you did were. for the way. You now, were. why is that? How can that be true? I, you know, you reached out to me and you said, I heard you, you've done this movie. And I said, but nobody really knows about it yet. And you said, well, I do. And, and you've got to come and you've got to sit down and talk to me about it. And so I didn't even really have my talking points Oh, I just, I hadn't really figured out how I was going to really I think frame you the movie. were still in and the final edit. I, I was, we were still cutting <laughs> and I thought, well, I, you know, I'll give this a go. And some of those stories are still out there on, on, on the internet. Okay. Talking about how, and some of them are quoted. I talked about how the, you know, the, the, the film was, was so, was made on such the cheap that we didn't have chairs for the actors. And so, so all of that stuff is still out there and it's just, it's such a pleasure to see you again, and and you've been a, a true believer of this project from the beginning, and I I'm just I'm I'm grateful to you and for you, and and God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. just been uh, it's just been something else. And and when when I heard that we were going to be chatting again about this, I thought that makes so much sense, and that is sort of going back to the to the source, as it were. Come right. full circle. Now, uh, Brett, you may remember, Krista was not working with us uh, way back. Well, actually, you were in 2011. Krista was our intern in 2011, Emilio. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. But, but Brett and, uh, and myself, and you may remember Robin Gould, our at the time producer, we were doing a series of shows in L.A. for the week, and instead, of, that was before, actually, it was actually before Sirius XM had a nice studio mm -hmm. set up in L.A. So we just, so they found some, they rented some little, <laughs> I think it was like a voiceover booth, meant for one person and the three or four of us were in there. That's right. No, that's right. It was awesome. And, uh, and, and I remember thinking, well, okay, uh, this is, you know, I, I, I don't know where we're going to go from here. And, and I don't know where. I think it's, you were thinking, I, I, I hope we go up better in terms well, of marketing. I think, I think the studio needs get higher and higher as the movie is finished or not. You got the right. studio that's available when the movie is not even done being edited. However, it did have In-N-Out smells wafting into that because we shared a parking lot with In-N-Out. So that's that was another plus. Right. That's right. In fact, <laughs> after our interview, I think I went over there and got a double-double with cheese. You might have, yeah. yeah. You weren't alone. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> So that was 2011. I mean, cer certainly many of our listeners have seen the film, but many maybe have not. So maybe let's right. recap in terms of your own life. And I know even your dad, Martin Sheen, both of you had some kind of connections to this Camino de Santiago that motivated you to want to make a film. It wasn't just like, you know, sitting around in some Hollywood room with lots of scripts going, oh, let's do this. Huh? No, no. On the contrary, this really kind of we came out of my dad's desire to want to walk the Camino, you know, his, his father, Francisco, to whom I dedicate the movie to, uh, at, the, at the very end, there's a dedication to Francisco, my grandfather, was born about 50 miles from, from Santiago de Compostela, a little town outside of uh, a, a bigger town called Vigo. So my father had always heard of the Camino de Santiago, had always wanted to go. And in the summer of uh, 2003, he was working on the West Wing. They had a very short uh, hiatus period in between seasons. My son was working as his assistant at the time. And my dad said, well, let's, uh, let's uh, they, they, they had scheduled a trip to Ireland, but my dad said, well, why don't we continue this journey and go to see Santiago? He said, we only have a short period of time, but let's go. So my son agreed, and, but they did it by car because of course they didn't have the time to, to walk the, the, the Camino. So they, they drove it. Oh, and, wow. And on the Camino, they stopped in a town called Burgos and my son met a gal and fell in love and decided to move to Spain. And I thought, okay, um, that's, okay. that's great. 
Wow. Um, but so, so I started saying, well, if I'm going to spend time with my son, I've, I've got to figure out how to work there. And so my <laughs> father and I began this dialogue about, okay, if we make this movie in Spain, what could it be? He says, well, let's make a movie on the Camino. And so that was sort of the beginning of the, of the discussion. Years later, I completed the script. Uh, we went off to Spain to, to, to make this film after getting turned down by every studio in Hollywood because, you know, you walk into these, these rooms with these executives and, and they all, you know, they want to make the next big action film. And, I said, and, and, and to, be, to, be to be clear, the rooms you're walking into larger than the voiceover booth we did our interview in. <laughs> they were, they were. And, but the table know, itself was right larger the than the studio. Even the table, yep. <laughs> and so you do this pitch and you're sitting there and said, it's about this, you know, this, this fabled Camino, this the pilgrimage across the north of Spain and people have been doing it for a thousand years. And, you know, again, my pitch was terrific and you just watch their eyes glaze over <laughs> and you, you could tell you could tell in the first few minutes that, that it was over that you right. weren't they were going to get any traction with this with the studio they're edge. like which so, superhero is in this again <laughs> exactly they're not tracking on this they just they didn't get it they didn't get it so so we decided well we'll go over there and we'll find true believers and that's essentially what happened ah. uh and so we went over there and we started doing the research and doing the you know doing the basically begging uh, and we, we we put the pieces together and by the, uh, by, by the, I think the fall of 2009, we were shooting and, um, and, and the film came out in 2011. We had a, we, we had a very limited release. Uh, and then the company that we were, that was the, our distribution company sort of ran out of funds and, you know, we were kind of left on our own and, and then the movie languished for, for a long time. It had a, a bit of a life on, on, on DVD and, and, a, and a life on streaming, um, but then it disappeared. And recently, in the last couple of years, I have been endeavoring to get the movie out of movie jail because it was in jail. It was actually sitting in a courthouse uh, in Delaware really? under a oh, motion no. to a motion to abandon rights. Oh, so no. I, I was uh, I got a call from a, a guy named Chris Bueno, who has a company. It's a boutique distribution company who said, I think I can help you rescue this movie. So we set about doing that. Isn't that I mean, that that's got to be somewhat frustrating i mean I, I don't and probably a lot of our listeners don't know how the whole industry works and all that sort of thing but right. this was kind of like your baby it'd be like if you created a sculpture or a painting and all of a sudden somebody said no you can't have it you're absolutely right and and, and father dave here's the thing that was so frustrating to me the the feedback that i would get whether it was through snail mail or online or you know dms or whatever it was people reaching out saying your movie changed my life Wow. And over and over again, the only person whose life wasn't changed by the movie was me. So I was like, wait a minute. Uh, so, so getting the film out of this movie jail and getting it back out on screens and Fathom Events has been terrific. We're out on just under a thousand screens, which is way more than wow. we've ever uh, experienced when it was first oh, released. Oh, really? Oh, that's uh, interesting. Just, it, it's, wow. So it's going to be everywhere, all over the country. And people will have an opportunity to not just see it on the big screen, but see it in community. And that's really what the movie is all about. It's about, it's about creating community. And, and when you're on the pilgrimage, when you're out there and you're, you're, you're doing the, the Camino, that is what you find. You find community, whether you want to or not. And sometimes the people who, are, who you travel with, your fellow pilgrims, are some of your best teachers. Mm -hmm. Even though you yeah, might sure. not want to travel with them, they, they become some of your best teachers. And you learn your greatest life lessons through sometimes the people that you don't want to be around. Right. Emilio Estevez is our guest here on the Busted Halo Show. We're talking about his movie, The Way, that you may have seen or may not. It was in jail, apparently. The movie was in jail. So we freed it from jail. It'll be uh, screened one night only, at least at least for now. It's one of these big things. Right? Who knows? It may take off. But certainly one night only coming up two weeks from this evening, May 16th, 100 screens around the country through Fathom Events. We'll certainly put a link as to how you can do that. But I, I, I can't tell you. I've had a lot of friends, several priests who I know, who have walked the Camino. I've never done it, although I do remember when you first met with us back in 2011, you gave me like the little shell, which is the little, the symbol of that people use, the symbol of the Camino itself as That's you're right. walking along. That's right. But I've never, I've never done it myself. But it's amazing how, like very few other things, even when, if we're talking about within a religious realm or outside of, 
where people just not only are changed, but they say, I can't wait to do that again. And you're like, wait, you walked for a month, you know, outside in the rain and got blisters and you can't wait to do that again. What is your sense having captured this in, in this, with the stories of these people, what is your sense of what's the magic of it? Well, I think, especially after the pandemic, I think we have come out of the other side of it wanting to be less isolated. I think that, again, we talked about community and finding community. And I think that that is coming out of the isolation, coming out of the, the, the sadness and the grief of the pandemic. People want to get back out in the world. They want to experience other people again. They want to be in that community. And I think that that is sort of at, at the core of why people are, are called to the Camino, why they're called the pilgrimage and why they want to go back and, and do it again. There are Camino addicts. There are people <laughs> that are out there doing it. You know, they'll, they'll, do, a, they'll do a spring Camino and then they'll do a, a, a fall Camino. There are five different routes to Santiago. So you can do, you know, you can change up your Camino every, every year if, if, if that's what you're, you know, if, that, if you've got the time to do it. Again, it's also a luxury to be able to take six weeks off and, right. and go right. do pilgrimage across the north of Spain. What, what, I, what I loved about the film that I very much still remember is, as you brought out, it, it is about the people. And it's, in some ways, obviously, there's some spiritual transformation that happens for many people, um, whatever. Sometimes people will come, will go with a particular something on their heart or some discernment right. or some grieving, right. as it was in the case with, with Martin's character in the, in the film. But it really is about the interaction. So I had a priest friend who did it a year year ago and yeah it was just a year ago that he did it. and he's a big introvert which is obviously a challenge for a priest to begin with you know, send a mass <laughs> and then you got to go like hide in your right. room for monday and tuesday <laughs> so right. but, i mean he was not expecting how quote extroverted it was during the day on the trail in terms of people chatting and and, and it seems like you can kind of like you follow in the movie that if you're walking roughly at the same pace you sort of travel with a group of people along, maybe not the entire time, but certainly, you know, you come in and out. It's not just one day. You'll get to see and stay with them and stay at the same place and all that. So he found, he said at night, I really needed just to close the door to my room and re recharge my introvert because on the trail, it was like people were talking and, you know, you really engage. And it's, of course, it's a beautiful way in which the characters, the other characters in your movie do really shape the main character. They do, and and what's interesting about the Camino is whatever your reasons for starting it when you leave Saint Jean Pied de Bourg are oftentimes not the reason that you thought you right. were doing the Camino. So you get to Santiago and you literally fall on your knees, and we would watch pilgrims just collapse wow. in 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 ecstasy, and and they would be crying and laughing concurrently, and it was just these magical moments huh. of what the the transformation that happens to the, the human soul over the course of that, of those 40 days where you are not only walking in, in community and, and, and with other people, but from all over the world, but you're also getting in touch with yourself. And you're also yeah. asking yourself yeah. the, the bigger questions, life's large questions of why am I here? How did I get here? What is my purpose? And how can I live a more purpose driven life? Sure. And I think that that is what really comes out in the film is that Tom, we see the transformation from this country club guy to ultimately at the end of the movie, a citizen of the world and a guy who's, who's rediscovered his faith. Cause he, yeah. he tells the priest on the road, he says, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a lapsed Catholic. I go to church at Easter and Christmas. And, and by the end he is transformed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as a matter of fact, we, you and I, my, our generation, middle age plus, Many of us experience that kind of circle of life where we find ourselves in a position of um, more the parent in terms of our parents. With you, it's very unique because you you get to direct your dad. This is somebody who raised you. I'm sure he was directing a lot of you when you were a young kid. Martin right. Sheen stars in the film. He's your dad, and here you are. Uh, take two. No, that was that was that was crap. We need to do a different take. <laughs> what on are you that doing one. out there? What, come on, what kind of acting? There were that? there there were moments. There were moments when he would look at me and he'd say. I got all the lines right. What more do you want from me? And that it's not just about the lines, man. You got to know. You know. You've been acting all your life. What are you talking about? Yeah, you got the lines right. Take there five, no everybody. Emotion. I need yeah, to talk exactly. to my dad for a second. Get it, get him together on this. But there were there were moments, man. There were moments where we uh, well, we didn't. Again, we had to keep our cool around the around the crew. 
Right. But, you know, but, but, but as far as the crew is concerned, my dad could do no wrong. He oh, was right, a legend. Right. He's right. a legend. He's the icon. He's a, meanwhile, I'm looking at him thinking, we're losing the light. We're losing the light. <laughs> yes, he's a legend. Yes, I don't care that he's a legend. <laughs> I'm, right. right. But still, I'm I, I, yes. I've, I've seen this guy with soup on his chin. Come on. <laughs> Not a legend to me. He is a legend. Well, well even as, as we're preparing for this interview, uh, the younger generation, Krista, my producer, she's like, well, his dad is the president. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's the president we, we all wish we'd had, right? <laughs> Chris, yeah. Krista, you're a big West Wing fan. Uh, ever since, honestly, I was in high school, and the show, honestly, was on right before I was in high school, but we would use it in our classes. And uh -oh. that kind of started us. Um, that my, my brother and I just absolutely loved and we had the op opportunity to meet your father once or twice and he's just so gracious every time so um, I'm glad that he's tapping in because uh, President Bartlett is also um, Catholic in the film that's and right, right. The, in the that's right. goes to Notre Dame and everything so to have more Catholic connections in his work, that's wonderful. <laughs> well, and that was one of the things too when he was talking to Aaron Sorkin about the character he said, I have two requests that he went to Notre Dame and that he's Catholic. <laughs> and that was that was wow. not in the original script. It was not in the original uh, game plan right. for the characters. So yeah, that was it was important for him. You, 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 you bend a little our, bit our, with some of these demands. I see. Emilio Estevez is our guest here on the Busted Halo Show. We're talking about his film, The Way, which two weeks from this evening will be a one-day only event through Fathom Events at a local movie theater, regular big old movie screen near That's you. Right. It is the uh, original version of the film from 2011, plus some new content. People are traveling again, you said, after the pandemic. And who knows more about people traveling than Rick Steves. Rick Steves joins us as the uh, the addendum piece of this movie. We're, we uh, we traveled up to Edmonds, Washington, and we did an interview with him. I was actually the moderator, and I sat between Rick and Martin, and I asked them questions about their lives and about faith and about family and about travel. And so the end of the movie that people are going to go back and see in theaters on May 16th has this 20-minute conversation with Martin and Rick and I'm, I'm there too, but it's really these two guys. And, um, and it's just a, it, it's a fascinating conversation. And it was, um, it, it was really lovely to be a part of. And I think it really elevates the movie to, uh, to a more contemporary level. Uh, and it will feel fresh again, even to people who have seen it before. I think it'll still, it'll, it'll feel fresh. And Rick is, uh, he's hilarious. And uh, as you know, uh, as far as traveling in Europe, Rick is your go-to guy. <laughs> Well, and it's, so it sounds like more of an addendum. I was picturing what George Lucas did with Hayden Christensen, where somehow you like photoshopped Rick Steve as one of the characters all along the way. But no, we'll do that it's in, not that. We'll, no, we'll do that on the sequel. Okay, we'll, great. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll actually have Rick on the Camino in the sequel. We'll put him on in. your left. Is. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. He's so funny. There's the Coliseum. Here's the, there's that. There's that. Uh, Pamplona. Oh, look. The oh, look at this. That's lovely. <laughs> Now you use the word so uh, as as they would say in court. The witness opened the door, Your Honor. Sequel? Did you say sequel? That's what we're talking about right now. Oh, Martin is nice. up, he's up he's up for it. Uh, he's uh, the, the sequel follows Tom's character, and we're in 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 we open. He's in Nigeria. He's working with uh, Doctors Without Borders. He is uh, performing cataract surgeries in a very remote village in the north. And uh, their, their only means of communication really are through uh, mail drops through, uh, by, via airplane. He gets this pouch that is not only contains medical supplies and eyeglasses and whatnot for the villagers, but is the mail. And in the mail is the Irishman's book uh, played by Jimmy Nesbitt. He's written this book about their time together on the Camino. And in the book is some very disturbing information that prompts Tom to pack up, leave Nigeria, and go find the writer to answer, so to have him answer some of the questions uh, that are that are now burning inside of him, and so that is the setup for the next journey. And it does ultimately takes us from Nigeria to Dublin to Amsterdam to Brussels to France, and then back to Spain. And you know what I'm very proud of right now is that now for the second time in a row we've been the official press of yes. this new movie. Yes. <laughs> And Here it is. And Here I, we I'll are. take I'll take it one step further. You guys may have already thought about the title and what have you of the sequel. We'd like to suggest calling it "This Is the Way." That way, people will think it's a Mandalorian movie, and you're going to get twice the ticket sales. Tons of people will buy yeah. tickets. Is Baby Yoda in it? Is Baby? We got to see this. 
And it could be Rick Steves holding Baby Yoda. And that could be like just walking down the Camino. Sorry, we're bad at this. No, no, no. That image is so terrifying. But you know what? People are into that now. I'll I'll certainly, I will pitch it. I promise. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, no, no, no. I I promise. I'll pitch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you No, totally. You. You. Well, because you walk into those meetings and you know you have to have the bad pitch so that they like the real one Mm. once you go to it after that. I, I I, I like that strategy. I yeah. That's you know what? It's actually <laughs> that's actually why he agrees to do this show. Every time he's about to come out with a movie, he can get those bad ones to burn off at the beginning yeah, of the pitch. Yeah. No, that's exactly it. That's okay. that is my strategy. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> well, at, at bustedhalo.com slash radio, there is a link to where you can get your tickets through Fathom Events to two weeks from tonight, May 16th, the re-release of The Way with brand new content from Rick Steves and Martin Sheen, as directed by Emilio Estevez, our guest. Thank you so much for joining us again. Thank you so much for having me back on the show. And I hope uh, you had more room during this interview, a little more I, elbow room. <laughs> no, I do. And, and I'll tell you what, let's not make it uh, another 12 years before we get back together. Please. Okay. Great. Okay. You, you, uh, Kristen right. is writing it down right now. All right. Good. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much.